G'day humanoid life forms. Chewy here. In this short video, I'm just going to bring you another short Chewy story from the Czech Republic back in 1999. Stay tuned. You'll hear how I almost died. Nearing the end of the three and a half months, I developed a bit of a sore throat. I went to the doctor, he gave me some sort of throat spray, he said, yeah, you got a bit of tonsillitis, some antibiotics should go away. So all well and good, did what he said. I still remember being out on the town with the boys one night, my throat was particularly sore. I didn't have a lot of money and I bought the cheapest, nastiest bottle of Russian vodka that I could find. The equivalent was around about three or four dollars for a 375 ml bottle of vodka. And it was bad, but at least it numbed the pain in the throat for a little while. We had to do a, a music festival. It was some sort of weird Hare Krishna festival. At the end of each day at the festival, they had some Hare Krishna jam session on the stage. That was the same gig that we had had played with Reef. We were the headlining act on the Friday night, they were the headlining act on the Saturday night. So we got there on the, I think we got there on the Friday, I can't really remember all those fine details. And I was sick as a dog, so I did my sound check and all of that stuff. And then I basically went back to the the motel room to just rest. I was feeling terrible. Friday night came and we did the gig. I still remember that gig vividly because that was the gig that I was jumping up and down so hard I actually put my foot right through the stage. <laughs> Almost up to the knee. <laughs> um, yeah, sickness or no sickness, I still jumped around like a maniac. So after the gig I was in no shape to do anything so I just went back and slept. I basically couldn't swallow anything solid at all. So the only thing I had was alcohol, water, tea and a little bit of yogurt for the next couple of days. So anyway that night on the Friday night I said to the, the manager, I said look I'm not well I need to go to a doctor and he was saying that, well, we're here for the weekend because of the festival. I'll take you to the doctor on Monday. So I basically slept for a couple of days. Stayed in my room, did nothing. On the Monday, I went and saw the manager again in the morning and I said, look, I really need to see the doctor, man. I can't even swallow food. I haven't eaten anything for three days. He said, all right, I'll, I'll call my dad and we'll get you to the, the children's hospital. He, his father was a businessman over there in the Czech Republic, which is why we ended up there. We had a lot of contacts. Anyway, this story is to be continued. I need to go and play lawn bowls. I'll try and tell you the rest on the way home. All right. Just leaving, I'm just leaving the bowling club. I was fortunate enough, God, speak English. I was fortunate enough to have a win which is nice, it means I have to come back and play tomorrow. But it also means I can't go for that ride down to Berrima with Rob from Throttle Down Under to Schmoken Cafe, which I would have liked to do. But priorities are priorities. I have to go with my commitments. All right, back to the story. So, I was at this children's hospital. You know, all nice decor and colorful and little tiny chairs and everything. The father of the manager of the band, you know, introduced me to the doctor friend that he knew. A female doctor, pleasant looking lady, you know, pretty even disposition. And she asked me to sit in the chair, so I sat in the chair, a bit like one of those little dentist chairs. She just said, please open your mouth. 
So I opened my mouth and she said, all right. She had a tongue depressor. She said, say ah. And I said, ah. And her face changed from quite pleasant to horrified. Like she'd just seen a ghost. Unbelievable. And straight away she started talking in Czech a million miles an hour to the manager. And they were talking in Czech for about 20 seconds. And he said to me, we must go now. And he grabbed me by the hand and he walked me to his car at a million miles an hour. He wouldn't let go of my wrist. It was like a naughty little school child being led to detention. He was walking so fast and I'm just thinking, oh my God, what's going on now? So as we got in the car, he's explaining, oh, we have to go to a different hospital. They can't help us here. And I went, oh my God, okay. So we jumped into this car, which was some sort of like an Audi or something like that. A pretty decent car. And this guy just floored it. He was zipping in and out of traffic on the freeway. At one stage, we took a freeway exit and there was a red light with traffic banked up. He locked on the brakes, four wheels skid to a stop, held his arm across my chest so I wouldn't hit the windscreen. And as the car came to a stop about 12 inches short of the car in front, he just looked at me and goes, <laughs> and started laughing. <laughs> and I'm just holding onto the seat, absolutely shitting my pants, pale as a ghost, sick as a dog, thinking, what on earth have I gotten myself into? We turn up at this institution, I won't even call it a hospital. I have no idea what it was. It looked like a psychiatric institution, all dark and old and ivy growing all up the walls. And he's racing me through the corridors to this room. And it was dark and dingy like some sort of Frankenstein movie with all old 70s decor, sort of, you know, the big old green porcelain and all that sort of stuff. And this big, tall, bearded Czech doctor with a coat and... You know, he looked like one of those crazy scientists. He said, said the same thing, sit in chair. So I sat in the chair, open mouth. I opened my mouth. I can't even speak. So I opened my mouth. He got the tongue, tongue depressor, pushed down on my tongue and said, say ah. So I said ah. He pulled the tongue depressor out. His, his expression didn't change. He just said, we must operate now. And I was like, what on earth are you talking about? So this nurse came running out with a tr with you know that trolley with all the stuff on it. One of those old fashioned metal syringes which was about 14 inches long. He did what he had to do and he said open mouth. So I opened my mouth. He had the syringe in his hand, you know, the mask on everything. And he said before he stuck the needle in the back of my throat this will hurt much <laughs> so he stuck the needle in and then he said after he pulled it out grabbed the scalpel held the scalpel in front of me and he said this will hurt anesthetic no do much too to inflame too too much and I went oh, okay here we go he said open mouth tongue depressor down again with a scalpel in his other hand and he just cut the back of my throat open. Immediately my mouth was filled with pus and blood and so the lady, the nurse, had a tray in front of me and they said spit so I spat it out instantly. It was a whole mouthful of green pus. It was absolutely putrid it was. So I thought oh, okay that wasn't too bad. I'm all right. Then he grabbed this kind of pliers they looked like needle nose pliers but they were bent at the end some sort of device that was designed to hold on to flesh and open it up is the best way I can describe it so anyway he got these sort of like bent needle nose pliers and he said open mouth and the nurse was holding the tongue depressor down and he said again this will hurt much and I was just like white with pain already I had no energy I was in no mood to argue so he stuck that thing in the back of my throat and all I see is these, this thing going down into my throat and then his hands holding onto it with two hands and he opened it up and then he twisted around like that. 
with this thing in the back of my throat and my mouth immediately filled with pus and blood I was on fire my whole body was screaming with pain I was just about to punch him in the face and he just stepped back he just stepped back and, and so I just was spitting out this blood and pus from the back of my throat then he had a conversation with the um, the manager while, while the, uh, the manager's father while the nurse was giving me rinses to rinse out and some iodine in the back of the throat and all that sort of stuff and, and then so in check he was explaining what was going on and what had actually happened to me it turned out I had an abscess in the back of my throat which was so engorged and inflamed that if it had have ruptured I would have been dead within 60 seconds there was that much toxin inside it if it had have internally ruptured I would have died within a minute. Now here I was thinking that's the end of it. Antibiotics and all that stuff. I had to go back to that crazy institution, whatever it was, for the next five days to have the abscess drained and stuffed with gauze without anaesthetic absolutely the worst and most horrible experience I've ever had in my life the manager explained to me that the doctor told him that's about as much as a human can tolerate before they pass out in terms of pain and that it's actually more painful than childbirth and that's how I almost died in the Czech Republic more than once well, actually, I was going to go to Amsterdam for a week. I had enough money saved up from the trip to spend a week in Amsterdam. And um, instead, I paid it on hospital bills and accommodation to stay in Czech Republic for an extra week. So all in all, fantastic experience. I recommend everyone travel to the Czech Republic and get really, really sick there. <laughs> but I am alive to tell the story, thankfully. Alright, thanks for listening to my Chewy story number two. I got plenty more. If you want to hear them, let me know. You know the drill, people. Until next time, be good to each other. Chewy out. Peace. One hundred percenters! You are the beautiful ones. Thank you very much for watching this far and commenting on the videos because you're all the same people, the ones that comment, the ones that watch all the way to the end. I do really appreciate it. Have you had any near-death experiences? If so, let me know in the comments or even better, make a reply video as a moto vlog while you're riding along. I would be more than enthralled to hear your success survival story. All right, see you later. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Oh, the L-plater did everything right, even indicated left out of the roundabout. Very, very good. Very, very good.